All right, dear viewer, let's lay it out on the table. The case is cold, just like the rock we're looking for. It's that hypothetical planet again, a real slippery character, warping orbits from the shadows. I've been following its gravitational rap sheet for years. It has left a trail of math miscalculations and confused astronomers. But it can't hide forever. This solar system ain't that big. If it's there, we will find Planet Y. Yep, another day, another quest to solve the solar system's riddles. New research points to another hidden world. I have to say, we shouldn't dismiss these theories until they're disproven. Scientists these days are overloaded with a vast amount of data. Thankfully, they have supercomputers going through mountains of equations bound to give a headache to someone like me. But it's how these theories come to exist. At one point, even Neptune seemed like a far-fetched theory. When Uranus was discovered in 1781 by William Herschel, for decades, it looked like the solar system's final stop. But Uranus didn't quite follow the rules. Something was off. Either the laws were wrong, or there was an invisible hand out there. Two math nerds, Adams in England and Le Verrier in France, picked up the abacus. And there it was. Neptune appeared exactly where predicted. That's a cool point for math. That triumph inspired the next hunt. In the early 1900s, Percival Lowell became hooked on the planet X theory. He was sure Uranus and Neptune were still wobbling funny, so he pictured a giant mystery world yanking their strings. His team hunted for years. And in 1930, Clyde Tombaugh found Pluto. Pluto is Planet X? Nope, not so fast. Pluto was too small, it didn't fit. The hype faded, and decades later, Voyager 2 showed that weird orbits made sense all along. Planet X, at least Lowell's version, had never existed. Then came Planet 9. In 2016, researchers noticed that distant Kuiper Belt objects weren't scattered randomly. Their orbits clustered strangely, as if something was tugging them into line. They proposed a super-Earth, 5 to 10 times Earth's mass orbiting hundreds of AU away. Simulations made it look convincing, but no one has seen it yet. A later discovery, a dwarf planet called 2017 OF201, made things even weirder. Some say it weakens the case for Planet 9. Others say it's more evidence. For now, Planet 9 is still a maybe. However, latest research points to another possible candidate, for now called Planet Y. Unlike the others, it's thought to be smaller, closer in size to Earth or Mercury, and hiding just past the Kuiper Belt. Here's the big clue. Way past Neptune, some icy objects are all tilted, like a bunch of marbles moving to the same side while on a flat surface. That shouldn't happen. Gravity should have straightened them out ages ago. The simplest explanation? A hidden planet, quietly warping the outer solar system like a mischievous babysitter. Astronomers check those Kuiper Belt orbits against the solar system's invariable plane basically the balance point of all the planets combined. If things were normal, the orbits should line up, but they don't. They're all slanted the same way, like a bunch of pencils dropped on the floor. And somehow every single one points toward the same corner. According to researchers, the odds of that happening by chance are only 2 to 4%. That's similar to flipping a coin five times in a row and it landing on the same side each time. Astrophysicists ran their fancy calculations and came up with the simplest explanation. You guessed it, another object with strong gravity. The math shows that a world somewhere between the size of Mercury and Earth, orbiting 100 to 200 AU from the Sun, could maintain that tilt. Not too big, not too small, not too far, just the right size and distance to warp the Kuiper Belt without throwing everything else into chaos. And here's where it gets fun. In theory, Planet Y could coexist with Planet 9. Planet 9 is supposed to pull icy orbits into clusters, kind of like a sheepdog rounding up sheep. Planet Y doesn't cluster anything. It tilts the whole playing field instead, which means if both turn out to be real, 
we might have two hidden planets shaping the edges of our solar system in different ways. So why haven't we seen this mysterious neighbor yet? Simple, it's faint. At 100 to 200 AU, sunlight is thousands of times weaker than here on Earth. A planet that far away could only reflect a tiny trickle of light. To our telescopes, it would look like a barely visible speck drifting across a crowded star field. Kind of like trying to spot a sleeping gray cat in a dark cellar with only faint moonlight coming through the window. It doesn't help that planet Y would move at a snail's pace across the sky. Snap a photo one year, and another a few months later, and it might not even look like it moved. Older sky surveys weren't designed to catch something that faint and slow. They're great for spotting fast-moving asteroids near Earth, but hopeless for a dim tortoise crawling at the edge of the solar system. But the hunt isn't over. Astronomers are putting their hopes on the Vera Rubin Observatory. This massive new telescope will take pictures of the night sky in unprecedented detail. If Planet Y is out there, Rubin could be the one to find it. And if it isn't, well, Rubin will give us the best proof yet that it doesn't exist. Who knows, maybe it spots something entirely different. But what if Planet Y is real? Where did it come from? Perhaps it's a leftover chunk from the solar system's wild early years. Billions of years ago, when Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune were still migrating, massive chunks of rock and ice were flung around like cosmic bumper cars. Some merged to become the planets we know today. Others were kicked out entirely, ejected into interstellar space. Planet Y might be one of the lucky survivors, massive enough to hang on in a stable orbit at the fringes. Another possibility is way cooler. Maybe it's a rogue planet. Planet Y might just be the cosmic equivalent of an adopted kid or a wandering stray that found a home. So what would it mean if Planet Y was real? First, it would mean a lot of textbooks getting another edition. New picture books as well. It would also challenge how we think planets form. A Mercury-to-Earth mass that far doesn't fit the standard model of planets forming near the Sun and staying put. Either the early solar system was wild enough to fling it outward and still keep it bound, or it didn't start here at all and was captured later, stolen from another star. There's another angle. Comets. A planet out there could tug on icy bodies at the edge of the solar system, nudging some inward. Over time, that might even have helped deliver water and building blocks for life to Earth. But that's just speculation at this point. However, the biggest question of all would be, what else is out there? If a planet the size of Earth can still slip under our radar, then smaller worlds, icy dwarfs and other mysteries could be waiting farther out. The Oort cloud might be home to things we haven't even dreamed of yet. Finding Planet Y wouldn't just add a planet, it would open a new chapter in exploring the solar system. So, here we are at the edge of the map, where the streetlights of our solar system flicker out. It's just another theory on top of a dusty desk. Another clue to chase down a dark universe. Some leads have gone cold and turned out to be ghosts. Others, still out there, waiting to be found. Planet Y? The case is still wide open, but one thing's for sure in our solar system. As long as the orbits keep wobbling and the cosmic rug stays wrinkled, astronomers, they'll keep looking. They'll never stop searching for the last planet hiding in the endless dark. Maybe it's just a matter of time. We will see. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.